Okay, welcome to uh, this wonderful evening. I wanted to introduce Rabbi Michal Zelikson, who is a noted scholar of Hasidus, of Chabad Hasidus in particular, and somebody who I've looked up to for many years since. When? How many years ago did you publish this? Uh, since this book? 1991. 1991, when I was uh, learning in uh, Crown Heights, I uh, came across this book as soon as it was published, and I think I read through the whole thing practically without stopping. Maybe I stopped for uh, a meal or something. And um, it was what I was looking for because I had been learning Hasidus for many years. I was young, so many years meaning many years for when you're young, even uh, seven, eight years is a, is a long time. And I had never seen everything kind of laid out in this framework that talked about the spiritual worlds, that talked about the what we call the Seder Hishtalshus, which means the uh, order of causality, cause and effect from the beginning or that which had no beginning actually to uh, to the present. And um, I'm really excited to actually be here with one of my heroes, uh, Bez Alexson, who uh, in addition to uh, other writings has now put out a huge volume of the um, all all the writings a uh, mafteach a um, how do you translate mafteach an index to all the the talks and teachings and even stories of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, which is just an amazing work. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to discuss and talk with Rabbi Zelikson about a a number of things from this Sefer, from this uh, book, Seder Hishlal Shulos Alamos, about the the spiritual worlds. And um, I'm going to start by talking with Rabbi Zelikson about the Aryan Self, about the infinite light. And I know, for example, there's a whole discussion in, um, amongst the Kabbalists in understanding is Aryan Self, is, is that God's essence? Or is Aryan Self God's emanation and not his essence? So there's a, it's a debate. There's a discussion. What does um, what what's your what what's your uh, sense of that? Okay, Hasidus explains that Ur means revelation. So it would be not so much the essence, but actually the infinite revelation that is uh, that is expressed and the, described as a name of a person. In the same sense that a name is something that it's not for the person himself. A person does not need a name for oneself. It is just that someone else should be able to relate to them. So the name is basically a relationship. A uh, It's interesting, there's in a certain uh, discourse, it's, the, the expression is a uh, handle uh, to connect to another person. In the same sense, the Talmud tells us that in order to begin a conversation with someone, you need to refer it to the person's name. It is basically in, in Leviticus when we begin the Chumash. It says, by Yikra the Kim Mesha, that the Almighty called Mesha, and then he started to speak. Which means that first we relate to the name of the person, then we can establish a conversation, a uh, relationship, communication. The same thing is also when Hasidus explains the light, the infinite light, it is explained as a, uh, as a name, which means as, his, as he relates to world, and he, as he generates life and energy in world. So the light is basically an infinite light because it's connected with him, but it's a revelation, it, it, it has a beginning. On the other hand, the Almighty is higher than beginning and end. So therefore, since we say that it doesn't have an end, from this we understand there's a beginning, we understand that the revelation is also limited to a certain extent, but it's considered infinite because it reflects uh, uh, the, the, it reflects the Almighty's uh, presence mm. and revelation. So I'm, I'm going to dig a little deeper. 
I like the answer, but I have some questions on the answer. We're, we're discussing the, when we say Ore and Sof, the light of the infinite one, is that God's essence or is that an emanation? And Rabbi Zelikson shared that because we don't call it Or She'en Lo Tchila, light that had no beginning, it means that it actually had a beginning. I actually remember that, I think it was in Tafresh Nun Tess, was a, there's a mimer of the Rashab, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Rashab, right. That writes in Samach Vav, and I remember, I remember the, learning the that uh, um, back in the day. And um, I want to dig a little deeper. We, we do say that Hu Shmo, that God and His name, were one in or in Sof, as it's still within, with before the Tzimtzum, that God's infinite light, and Him and His name are one, meaning they share something that there's some aspect of the or that, that, that's, that is etzim in a sense, that is like the essence. Am I speaking English? Or not really? There's some aspect of this infinite light. Let, let, me, let me be clear here, and just to kind of bring it down is God's essence is the one thing that we until maybe the last Lubavitcher Rebbe it was the one thing that we just was untouchable you couldn't describe it you couldn't say anything about it even if you say that it is you have to qualify it by saying it's isness it's beingness it's not a beingness that we can actually say is is it is yet it isn't because by saying that it is we're saying that we can define it you can't really define it yet on the other hand it's the most real thing that there is but not in what we understand so this idea of atmos i believe in kabbalah they limit a conversation to it because it's not what we relate to. So that's kind of when you were talking about the name, Rabbi Zelson was talking about the name of God, even in the level of the Orient Sof, which is infinite, we're still saying it's in relationship to us. I just want to ask a question. Can we actually relate to something that is Ain Sof, whether it has a beginning or not? I think even the Rashab says in Rashi test, it's not that it had a beginning, but it could have had a beginning, I think, <laughs> something like that. It's not conclusive, but but the fact is that it doesn't have an end. It is infinite. How could we call something that's infinite Shmo? I'm just wondering about that. Is it name? Infinite still means I can't relate to it. Okay, at least I can define that it's undefinable, that it's infinite. It's without end. But why is that Shmo? Why is that? In, why would why would that be considered? I'm sorry to give you a hard time. Just you can just turn it back on me and tell me. I'm not going in any direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in in Cause general, because you have to go on to the next thing, so you okay, don't have to so worry. Okay, so this is basically what uh, what we're getting to. Shmoi in Kabbalah is also referred to the ten attributes. The ten attributes are basically I'm going to give you a hard time. Character this. traits and uh, a, a and a person, every person has on their soul. A reflection of the ten attributes, which are reflected in the uh, reflected in the personal character traits of the person. On the level of the, the character traits, there are different stages. There's a stage as it is part of the essence of the soul, and then there is part as it's already being revealed and relating to somebody outside of the person. <coughs> For example, you have a person that is a generous person. Every person has a a uh, a, a character trait which is generous, chesed. There is also strictness removed, and when we say generous, there is this, this character trait which is in the soul of the person, but it's not being expressed yet. It's part of the soul of the person, and it's not really, there's nothing practical, practical yet happening. And when a person is actually ready to bring it down in a practical sense, this is when it stands out as an entity for itself. So getting back to Shmoy, to shame. When we speak about the name of Hashem before the uh, before the uh, contraction, before the tzimtzum, before the delimitation and everything, before the removal of light, before the blackout, it is something that was only Him, 
and because he is complete, so therefore he also has Shem. He has also the name, which the name refer, uh, relating here is uh, re we're referring to how he also relates to the outside world. But because there was no outside world yet, so therefore it was all part of him. There was no space for a dimension for world yet, because it was before anything happened yet. So therefore, shame, it is ha Yahush Mabelvad, it is name, and him became one. His, the, it, it was all as part of him, it wasn't yet unfolded, how he has a relationship and how he relates to the world and the chain of creation that was created later. Are there, there's just one more question, because I think our time for this particular subject, we want to move on to, these are big stuff, we want to move on to the first symptom, but just one last question. Does Chabad Hasidus say that there are Olamos in the Ein Sof of the What's Olamos? Olamos means there are worlds, spiritual worlds, not physical. It says there are spheros. Right. Spheres, we, we know... Within the R and so of Nazism. Right. The ten attributes, there's... Uh, Chassidus generally concentrates on on uh, the ten attributes that are as part of the Almighty. And uh, this is because he is Shlemus, he is a com complete, complete and ultimate, so therefore he has this potential. But Elamus generally is not taking consideration until after they yeah. came into being. Is there any controversial aspect to Chabad's understanding of the ten spirit existing in the Orange Social Thant Simpson that's not accepted by other schools of Kabbalah? Not? I'll tell you, I didn't study too much from in other yeah. circles, but basically when the Rebbe Rashab, when the fifth Rebbe of Chabad is, tr is explaining how could we say ten attributes in uh, such a delicate mm -hmm. level, He's trying to, to find different examples, one after the other, very delicate examples. And uh, in a nutshell, one of the examples that he uses, and is used quite often in Hasidus, Chabad, is uh, a flint stone. A stone mm. that you strike, you strike against it, and a spark comes out. So on one hand, there's a spark that comes out. On the other hand, there's no physical fire in that stone. Mm. So this is like, it's there, but it's not there. So this is how the Rebbe Rashab explains what it means, the ten attributes. Mm. It's interesting. That, that symptom, or people don't know what that means. The symptom is the contraction. Because I, I, just from learning uh, Eitz Chaim and Ochoz Chaim, the, the, uh, the Ari, it's not so clear. It's actually, there, there's some areas where indicate that there are spheros within the Ein Self, the Helen. The spheres are, yeah. I mean, spheres we are saying. The yeah, I know what we're saying. I'm talking about the four Chabad so this in within, uh -huh. within the Riyana Kabbalah, within the teachings of the Ari, and there's other areas which seem to indicate that in the Aryan social of that symptom, there's still the, it, it's the, it's the, the shame of all, even though it's the Rashab goes to great lengths to distinguish how their their gun is b'matzilon. What about in Atmos? Is there is there any teaching about whether the essence, the ten spheres in God's essence, can be there in any capacity? In general, we speak Yachal, about uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's, all. A, it's it's a yochid meyuchad. He's not composed of any details, so that's why Chassidus generally always Just speaks keep about away from it. Himself. Okay, so thank you, Rabbi Zelikson. We're going to now talk about this.